the patients we saw today was Sam, a 15-year-old cat. Sam presented for evaluation of uh, originally non-specific signs like just not being as active and being a little uh, confused but uh, signs progressed to walking in circles and uh, blindness on one side of the body and um, just confusion lethargy getting stuck in corners so on our examination today with Sam he had a tendency tendency to turn to the right so he would uh, prefer to walk in circles towards the right um, he did not respond if we brought our hand up to his left eye, um, but did respond on his right eye. And he also had decreased sensation on the left side of his face. So when we have an animal that has uh, behavior change, walking in circles compulsively in one direction, uh, blindness on the opposite side of the body, decreased sensation, sometimes we can even see uh, postural reaction deficits or, or uh, the, the limbs won't replace. We didn't see that in Sam today, but um, those all suggest a problem in the right front part of the brain. So we were able to tell where the problem was, but we didn't know what the underlying cause was. We can come up with a relatively short list of possible causes for a 15-year-old cat with progressive right forebrain symptoms. Um, the most common thing is what we call a meningioma, or uh, it's a type of brain tumor that arises from the coverings of the brain called the meninges. There are other things that it could be, other types of tumors, uh, malformations, fluid pockets, etc., cetera, um, infections, but the most common thing that we see in a 15-year-old cat is a brain tumor called a meningioma. So we talked with the owners about doing further tests. Um, we already had blood work, belly ultrasound, um, x-rays, etc. So the next step was an MRI of Sam's brain. Um, this is the MRI of Sam's brain. So what we're looking at here is Sam in profile. Uh, the nose is over here and we're kind of zoomed in on the brain. This is the brain and, and you can see right here there's uh, something that shouldn't be there. If we think of Sam as a loaf of bread and we make slices, that's what this picture is here. So um, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see Sam's ears. This is the right side and the left side. And this slice is the slice of bread made right through the middle of his brain here. And what we can see on this image is a um, bright, or this is after we've given contrast, so it's a contrast enhancing mass that's on the surface of the brain, and it's kind of pushing in, compressing the brain. The other things we can see is the bone of the skull here is thickened. So when we see those sorts of things, the uh, primary consideration for something like this is a meningioma. Meningiomas tend to be slow-growing, benign tumors, um, and many times they do very, very well with surgery. Um, so we recommended surgery to Sam's parents. Um, obviously, they need some time to think about things, and we completely understand that. So right now, Sam went home with some medications uh, to decrease swelling around the tumor. It's not going to kill any tumor cells, but I suspect that it's going to make the symptoms look much better. We're gonna see Sam back in about a week, and hopefully he's doing well then, and then we'll talk further about the various options of whether it's surgery or just continued medications. No, he just kept like sort of going. As I, as I explained, my wife rides horses, so he used to go out to the barn a lot okay. and very often, and then he would play and run and you know be happy. So obviously he'd be sore the next day or the day after that. And then here and there, it just started kind of like becoming worse, plus the tile surface on the old floor that we used to live at uh, didn't help. He would slide a lot on it, so I had to always trim his uh, paws and uh, okay. things like that. So our second patient of the day was Jacob, a 10-year-old corgi that presented to us for progressive rear limb weakness. Uh, for the last several months, his rear limbs have been weak, and it started off kind of slowly and subtly. Um, but over the last two to three months, symptoms have gotten worse. He's still able to walk, but he's weak and wobbly in his rear limbs. His back legs sort of crisscross and spread out, but his front limbs, or what we call the thoracic limbs, are normal. So he's what we call ambulatory paraparesis. 
He's able to walk, but he's weak and wobbly in the rear limbs. Based on his examination, it suggested a neurological problem affecting the mid-back, or what we call the T3 to L3 spinal cord. And based on his age, his breed, and the progression in the symptoms, we could come up with a relatively short list of possible causes. The three main things that we thought might be going on with Jacob were either a slipped disc, a tumor, or degenerative myelopathy. So Jacob already had some blood work and x-rays. We went ahead and we proceeded with an MRI of his back. So we MRI'd kind of from his shoulder blades to his tail. This is an MRI of his lower back. So right here is his back, this is his belly, and this is him in profile. These are the bones of his back. And in between each bone is a disc and the spinal cord runs from his head to his tail. And you can see that he has multiple um, mild to moderate disc bulges. Um, so the disc bulge certainly can cause um, rear limb weakness in, in dogs, um, but 10-year-old corgis um, can frequently get a condition called degenerative myelopathy. So for a couple reasons, despite finding disc bulges, we're gonna hold off on doing any sort of surgery. One, just because there are multiple disc bulges, we want to hold off um, and not necessarily rush into surgery. The second reason is we're going to submit a test that tests for the genes associated with degenerative myelopathy. And um, those sorts of things, we want to make sure that he does not have degenerative myelopathy or does not have the genes associated with it. So um, Jacob went home today, we uh, prescribed some medications and we, um, we submitted some blood tests for the degenerative myelopathy screen. Apollo was an eight-year-old golden retriever mix that presented for evaluation of seizures. Um, Apollo had seizures about four years ago. He just had one and then did not have any further seizure activity. Um, but then about three weeks ago, he had three to four seizures over three to four days. Um, on examination today, he was very, very alert. He was aware he did not have any evidence of incoordination or imbalance, all of the nerves around his face were normal. So a seizure is an abnormal burst of electrical activity. And in general, we think of three main things that can cause seizures. The first is something outside of the brain that secondarily affects the brain. Um, things like low blood sugar, liver problems, kidney problems. Um, these were all things that had been tested for by, by his veterinarian. The second main thing that can cause seizures is something physically wrong inside of the brain, like a brain tumor or a stroke or encephalitis or infection. And the way we look for those is with an MRI. The third main cause of seizures is idiopathic epilepsy. Usually comes on between one and five years of age. So the fact that Apollo was coming up on eight years of age made it less likely, not impossible, but just less likely. The only way to truly diagnose idiopathic epilepsy is by ruling everything else out with an MRI and blood work. So that was our recommendation, was an MRI. Um, right now, the owners are going to think about things and um, you know they'll get back with us on whether they want to pursue an MRI or not to find the underlying cause. In the interim, we've prescribed some anti-seizure medications with the goal of decreasing the frequency of the seizures, the severity of the seizures, and um, decrease the likelihood that we have uh, a cluster or multiple seizures in a 24-hour period.